You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you you get the last word. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Running Wild Podcast. I'm your co-host, Rich. Alongside me, as always, my co-host, Runs. Yes, sir. Uh, just before we get started, I want to remind you that we're being brought to you in partnership with LastWordOnSports.com. Uh, we're also being brought to you in partnership from uh, Wrestling to the Max. That's W2M Network. You can find them on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Running Wild LWOS. Find us on Facebook at Running Wild on Wrestling. Uh, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, you can also find us under the Last Word on Sports channel and as well as the W2M channel. And you can find us really at this point anywhere where you want to listen to a podcast, you can listen to us. We're, uh, we're most recently added to the Google Play Store for Android users out there. So if you're uh, listening to us on a computer most of the time but you're on the go now, go to Google Play Store. You can find us there on, on the music channel. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube. Our very latest video actually had uh, footage, pictures going across during our podcast from the the show that we attended and we wrote about. So we'll be adding more things like that, a couple more exclusives. So go over to YouTube. Even if you already follow us on one of those other sites, just subscribe to us on YouTube so you can see some extra content from, uh, from us once in a while. All right, with all of that out of the way... This part of the show is actually being taped after Runs and I uh, got together. Uh, I was able to go to a Five Boroughs Wrestling show tonight in Brooklyn. So I got a chance to speak with Mike Verna, the current Five Boroughs Wrestling champion, and PJ Stackpole, his manager slash sometimes enemy. Uh, So that's coming up next. Hope you guys enjoy. I'm uh, here with uh, Mike Verna, and PJ Stackpole is hovering in the back over here as he doesn't really let any of his, uh, his men uh, just get interviewed without him being in the area. I'm not going to lie. I personally didn't want him here, but, you know. So, Somebody Mike. You may, not have wanted me, you may not have wanted me personally here, but I can't trust you to ask intelligent questions. So I'm going to be a sort of an off-screen editor to make sure the questions are good. Is that okay with you? Yeah, you know, it Thank you. Now, now, it's, it's FSW, first FBW. Of all, I'm, I'm kind of sick of seeing well, your face. I'm just going to interject gonna gonna real briefly, then I'll step out. You introduced, and what you didn't say was, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you now to the new FBW heavyweight champion. We are m- mere minutes away from the championship uh, match where Mike Verna defeated three other men for the title. I think that's a good starting point, don't you? Uh, it's my show, so you know what? You can run your show the way you want. I'm going to run my show the all way right, I want. All right, Wolverine, you got it. Whether I hate him or love him, whether I hate him or love him, PJs tend to be always somewhere, so we got to deal with him. Where, where did you guys actually like hook up? Where, oh God, I don't, I don't know. We're working on ten years. <laughs> it's actually funny. Uh, we started at a senior trip. Uh, excuse me, uh, post prom. What is it? After prom? Is that the term for it? After prom, seaside. Listen, there's not many wrestling fans in, in high school. Let's put it that way. When you find one, you get close to them real quick. <laughs> and uh, the rest is history. Let's put it that way. We did 3D a human being through a cot and ended up having, having to pay uh, several hundred dollars by the time we left Seaside at 17 years old, and it's history ever since. The long story short is go to prom together. Not together, obviously, well, but we're at the same prom. That's fine. Go to the after prom, a little party afterwards. You need to share a room. And they said, Peach, they said, we're putting you in the ring with Mike. He's a wrestling fan. You'll be fine. And we said, okay. And that was, yeah, that was rest, pretty much it. The rest was history. Like I said, whether I hate him or love him, he tends to always be there. So what am I going to do at this point, right? Um, you know, lately you've been kind of uh, in the news a lot. I, recently there was a documentary that was being filmed at your last event over at FSW that just came out. And also there's uh, big news. I think I'm going to let you give it the big reveal. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm playing uh, Superman in a – it's called a fan film, but what the best way I can explain it is it's similar to like a uh, Tribeca film festival, Comic-Con type film. So it's not in movie theaters. It's pretty much a straight-to-YouTube, straight-to-DVD type of thing, but it is being input 
given it to success into uh, Comic-Con, maybe Tribeca, stuff like that. So it's kind of like a, a low-budget starter film, let's put it that way. And it's called uh, Men in Black, Kryptonian Wars. It tends to be a crossover between the Men in Black and Superman. Nice. The, the alien hunters with the, the nicest ha- alien of all time taking on a who, better Who evil. else is in that movie with you, Mike? P.J. Stackle is playing Lex Luthor. Go figure. <laughs> what? Go fi- yeah, P.J. Stackle is the, the role of Lex Luthor. He may be, <laughs> may be doing a better job than the one we saw in the, in the most recent yeah. Batman movie, Batman Absolutely. Superman movie. I mean, he certainly has the hair for it. So uh, I, yes. I think that- or, or lack thereof, but uh, yes, sir. So it's going to be good. That's going to be, we're starting filming in the next month. So I would look for uh, six to seven month dawn date, and then we'll take it from there. Are you actually a big fan of comics? I am a big fan, believe it or not, of Batman growing up. I was never a big Superman guy. In fact, the way I got my name was I was one day training in the Ludus with Joel, and I was wearing a Superman shirt. And my hair was getting a little uh, sweaty, and I had no beard at the time. And uh, he turned around and said, I got it. Man of Steel. That's it. <laughs> so uh, that was it. I mean, he wanted my last name to be something different. But I, I came up with him. I said, look, no matter what name you make me, I don't want to change my first name. And I will tweak my last name. I don't want to make it big one day and be called David Fox. Or Ethan, okay. Ethan Chase, as they wanted to call me. <laughs> Sounds like someone from Hillary Duff. Uh, Lizzie McGuire, whatever it is. That being said, we came up with The Man of Steel, Mike Verna, and the, uh, the rest has been history. So I wouldn't say that I'm not a comic book fan, but it definitely didn't start. Like, I'm not a big mark, for lack of a better word, but I, I love the characters. And if you're a wrestling fan and you love the, the art of wrestling, that means you have to love some sort of comics. I will say this, just to interject about um, Kryptonian Wars, Men of Black. It is an extraordinarily good script. I think no- normally you hear they're making a fan film, you think it's going to be really low rent. The script is extraordinary. The graphics are really above par, and I think it's going to be great. I just wanted to interject that. He's actually said something right for once. But for, for a low-budget quote-unquote, uh, it was remarkable, I think, how, how good it was and how surprised I was how good it was. I wouldn't attach my name, believe me, to anything that's going to embarrass me. Yeah. I, think it, I think it is that good. And I'll go on record of saying that. The writer and director, uh, Felipe Matos, he's a big uh, fan in comic books, so he really take it. Uh, he took his story and his vision very seriously, and he made sure that both stories, Men in Black and Superman, directly correlated in a way where the, the movie can make sense for real deal fans. And that's what this movie is. It's something made for fans. For fans, for fans. Exactly. That's it. Oh, that's super exciting. I mean, as a, myself, a huge comic yeah. book fan, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Hopefully, I love to see some stuff at Comic Con. I mean, I'm definitely going to be, be there. If we can get our foot in the door with that, we'd be in good shape. That's for sure. But it's a start. We got to see. We got to see. You know, my, 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 I always say, not to go off the tracks, but my, my goal in wrestling and in life is to be as successful as The Rock. And I don't care how fanboy and Marcus that makes me sound, that if you can have the success in the ring and outside the ring is him. You, you did something good. So it's fanboyish to be the biggest movie star in Hollywood? I'll take it. I, yeah, I'll take it in a second. Guilty. So, Reese, I mean, like, coming into tonight, you know, you had already held two titles. Uh, you know, you had the FSW championship that I, I've seen you uh, perform at live. I mean, are you becoming, like, the king of indie wrestling in Brooklyn over here? I mean, how many titles? How, how are you... How big is your bag? Will you be able to actually carry all three belts? I'm flattered by that statement because I, I like to stay humble. I like to stay... I'm, I'm very lucky that my hard work, whether people want to call it hard work or not, or he's just pretty and he has muscle, so he gets every... Whatever people want to say, it's working one way or another, you know? And I wouldn't want to say I'm the king of New York because I think New York has the most talented wrestlers on the independent scene. I mean, the list is just way too long for me to name, but I, you, you've come to enough shows, you see what we have, you see what New York brings to the table. And to represent multiple companies is a big deal for me. And I will say this, I think there's one person that comes to mind that um, we'd sell a building out, and that would be uh, Rude Boy Riley, the tier, yeah. one, the tier one and Warriors champion going against the FSW and the uh, Five Borough Wrestling champion. That's, uh, that's money, baby. Hanging for the rafters. And Mike would never be so arrogant as to do this, so I'm going to do it. Rude Boy Riley, you have two belts. Mike's got three. Between the two of you, you do, as you say, dominate New York. Let's make it happen. Put it all aside. Make it happen. Put the politics aside. Put the nonsense aside. Let's make it happen. Man to boy. Man of steel, rude boy. Let's make it happen. Let's give the fans what we want. Let's just see what would happen. It's there for you. Let's do it. I mean, I'm the bad guy. He's the good guy. But I'll close on saying me and Riley for the fans. That's what it's all about. If if I have to say something, I think what the fans really want to see is PJ get in the ring as a competitor. Boy, well, I'm going to tell you this. Go, go back to YouTube, type in uh, my 
Tyler Burno, PJ Stack, or Matt Stryker versus Omega Black. And you'll see, uh, you'll see the early stages of PJ when he had a soul and a little bit of hair. Very little. Very little. But he has the best kip up in the Indies. I'll tell you that. And, uh, you know, I heard you guys talking some trash during the match about uh, sports teams. So I, I just, I need to know, Met fan or Yankee fan? Have you ever seen my tattoos on my leg? I don't oh, really yeah. look at your leg that closely. Oh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not flattered here. Well, if you can see, I got multiple Oh, this guy's tattoos. got a Met tattoo. I can I, confirm I, I, I this I right here. I have multiple Met tattoos. I have three. I have Piazza's number on the back of my thigh, the MY, and I got the big Met logo. So I am a... Me and Myers, let's put it that, this way. We went to war today, but at least it went to a Met fan, right? And the, the last thing I'll ask... Um, sorry, I'm going to cut this part. I'm just, one second. I'm just like having a brain fart. Oh, so recently I've been uh, following you. Uh, if anyone's been following you on Twitter, they see that you had a little bit of a war with Maxwell Jacob Feinstein. Oh, yeah, lately we have. I, I wouldn't talk about it, basically. Yeah. Well, June 24th, WFW, uh, World's Finest Wrestling. It's run by uh, Harold O'Hartz, who you can see on the, uh, the ring announcer for NYWC, SWA, and multiple other companies. He uh, is debuting in running his company out of the, uh, the Sportatorium in Deer Park. Uh, he's got a hell of a roster. I mean, I'm talking about the New York talent that you see. He's got everyone from A to Z. So it's going to be a sick show. And he's putting me against uh, Maxwell Jacob Feinstein, who is uh, Brian Myers and Pat Bucks, creative pros, one of their breakout students, one of the most talented young guys on the scene right now. And he reminds me so much of myself, uh, you know, breaking into the business with a lot of talent, a lot of um, charisma, a lot of um, high hopes behind him. And he's going out there and he's proving to people that he can go. So, you know, out of all the first time ever matches I've had so far, that one I'm looking forward to. Um, we'll see what happens. Don't get me wrong. Who knows? Kid's a little bit of a snob, a little stuck up, so he may have some tricks up his sleeves, but I'll whoop his ass. Worst come to worst. And I'll just add, if there was one person I could manage outside of, obviously, Mike, uh, it would absolutely be Max Jacob Feinstein, who I think is the hottest young up-and-comer right now, and I think he's going to be a huge match. And like Mike said, I think he's absolutely the blueprint that Mike was. He's got the look. He's got the talent. He's got the attitude. And he's going to be a hell of a match. And, I, and Mike's got a little bit of the experience on him, so we're going to see if that pays off. He may have some more speed. He may have Max, some more speed. And Max, if you're looking for an agent, brother, I'm here for you. But in the meantime... This is why we don't This is why we don't roll together that much wow. anymore. i got to take him you to deal business with me. Yeah, you tell me. This is the nerve. This is why people don't like him and they cheer for me. And the last <laughs> question I'll ask you. You guys have been posting the most amazing pictures of each other <laughs> in this Twitter war. Uh, I just... Where are you getting this... Uh, where are you getting this information from? F this Facebook is a wonderful thing when you have the spare time, which not many of us do, but I guess randomly we do get the spare time, to creep. <laughs> and, and when you creep and you dig deep enough, you find some hidden gems. And that's for sure, and I'll leave you on that. You want to find some wrestling gems? F whoever you have friends with on Facebook, look at them, go deep, find what they got, and have some laughs. <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank uh, both of you guys. Mike Verna, the new FBW champion, the FSW champion. The last one's slipping. Nice. The Dynasty Champion. That's upstate New York. I just want to plug them real quick. If you're ever in the Albany area, the Buffalo area, even Troy, New York, even freaking Montreal, if you have the opportunity to go out and see Dynasty Pro Wrestling, that's going to be a company with the production level, the locker room, and the owner, Chris Envy. When you have the opportunity to watch them and see what they're able to do, trust me, they're going to be a household name on the Indies yeah, very production soon. Production value, that's second to none, and that's really their, uh, their strong suit. It looks like you're at a wrestling show, and you can't put a price on that. Thank you guys very much. Uh, if you want to catch PJ or Mike, both of them together, you can come out to Fighting Spirit Wrestling's Lucha Libre Extravaganza, which will be May 6th at the American Legion on Avenue N. That's 5601. You can go to FightingSpiritWrestling.com and catch tickets. And we hope to see you there. Yes, sir. And also, NYWC tomorrow. I don't know if this is going to air tonight, but April 30th, April Rain, big show for NYWC. It's at the Sportatorium. That'll be tomorrow. Uh, thank you. You're a fucking hell of... I'm sorry. You're an effing... Uh, hell, you're a hell of a uh, podcast host. Well, thank you guys so much. No problem. You're a special thank you uh, goes out to uh, PJ Sekpole and Mike Verna once again. Uh, you guys were uh, great guests, and I uh, look forward to having you on the show soon, and uh, also checking you guys out uh, over at uh, Fighting Spirit Pro Wrestling Show on May 6th, uh, Lucha Libre Extravaganza. All right, uh, back to your regularly scheduled programming with Rich and Runs making our payback predictions. A lot of wrestling this week, self-imposed, I believe, on us, basically, with the week off. No? Yes? Yeah, uh, no. Yes or no? 
you've got your highspots.com. So this guy's been, I'm trying to catch up on the other stuff he tells me to watch. So then this week he decides, I'm just going to watch all this other stuff so I can give you double the work to try to catch up on. Well, would you like me to rewatch it that I've already watched? or It might make things easier. I'm actually yeah. just more excited. I think the thing I'm most excited about this week, we have payback coming up. We're going to get into predictions as we go through the show. But I'm more excited about WWE, Camp WWE. Yeah, did Finally. you watch the uh, four-minute like preview? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Oh, finally, finally. I've been waiting for this since Rock and since Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling ended. When when um <laughs> except this is a little uh, uh on a different level, but like when they were showing like everyone who was in it, I was like, Oh, I wonder who they replaced CM Punk with and then they got to R Truth and I was like, Oh well, that's definitely who they replaced CM Punk with Because <laughs> I already mm. knew that Hogan was Flair. So I was like, oh, who did they rewrite, you know, CM Punk? And I was like, oh, well, who's the only person who does not make sense right here? There's a part of me that just wishes that there's a part of me that hopes that truth is on it the whole time. They were just like, yo, this guy is gold. We can't keep him off the show. Well, it's not actually him, but we need a a token on there. (laughs) It's so bad. Uh, But no, but I'm I'm really excited about it. I love that it's an adult cartoon. Um, It's going to be ridiculous. I really, again, I mean, I complain about this all the time, but I just, I hate that it's going to be on the network after the pay-per-view. Well, it just says May 1st, it'll be on demand, so I don't know if it'll be after the pay-per-view or or before. I'll be super hyped if I get to watch it before the the show starts, because there's no chance I stay up and watch it, so. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I would love it if there was every episode, but I would also hate it because I would finish it before the pay-per-view even started. So yeah. hopefully it's just kind of one episode at a time. Yeah, I don't want it to, like, Netflix, like, binge on me. No. All right, so you want to get started with Monday Night Raw? Nah, I don't feel like talking about that this week. No? You want to just keep it centered on, like, Impact <laughs> and, like, the episode of Lucha you didn't watch and stuff like that? Yeah, everything, everything that I didn't watch because I got just wrapped in a PWG vortex. I mean, that's just just to be let, let's make that clear. You did not watch wrestling because you were wrapped up in. I watch wrestling. wrestling. I just watch wrestling from two thousand and six and seven. You know, like the roster on PWG in two thousand and eight is just the main event of WWE right now. Like it, it's remarkable. Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, CM Punk, Kevin Owens, El Generico. Uh, it's nuts. And then Roderick Strong, the Young Bucks, Neville. Like it, it is absolutely insane. And then are they all are they all actually good at that? Like yeah, like I know I'm being this stupid. Is, this I'm is when like, they're just, like, raw. This maybe. is when they're young. No, they're not raw. They're they're younger and they're like they're not. Polished. They're not. They're not the finished product you see now, which okay. is crazy. You know, like to like literally. I was just watching um, El Generico, Kevin Steen, Guerrilla Warfare, which is like you know anything goes, fight without honor, all that kind of stuff, and for the belt. And I was like, yo, I, in in two days, I'm going to be watching this on the WWE Network uh, on a WWE pay per view. And it was like, you know, here's a fatter, clean shaven Kevin Steen. Here's a skinny, scrawny El Generico. And you're watching that match. You're, I'm like, there's no way either of these guys are ever being, in, you know, going to make it to WWE or be anything big in WWE. And here we are. They're about to have a pay per view match. So it, it's crazy. Does it? All right. So, I mean, we can just use this as a jumping off point. Does it annoy you at all that they make it seem like they were just friends from back in the day and they, like, ignore their background on the in- – like, you know, basically the, the build-up to the match has been talking about how they've been friends for all these years, but they completely leave out the Generico stuff. What do you want them to say? That they wrestled for 10 years and Sami Zayn wore a mask? You, you you can't say that. Why? So, Why? You talk about you talk about the Bullet Club being from New Japan. Like you're being very open. Because, 
you want them to ruin everything he worked so hard to create? Uh, are you what? What the hell is wrong with you? You want them to break down the El Generico wall for what? Just for a promo package? You're they're doing a great. He all was right, wearing right, a PWG all right. shirt in one of the pictures. All right, all right. What right, are you okay. kidding me? Okay, you know, all right, all right. They, they, they do. They talk about him being El Generico as much as you possibly can without ever saying he's El Generico, and that's where they have to keep it. What do you think? So, what do you think happens at the pay per view? In terms of them, yeah. I don't know, because <laughs> I think Kevin Owens wins to build up the underdog Zane, but you know I could why why wouldn't Zane win and and build Owens frustration and and you can go either way and play this storyline off. You know I've seen it for the past five ten years, so uh, I don't know. I mean, this how long do you think this feud will go? I don't know. I, like forever, but this this current iteration, I, I don't know. Like you know, these guys have literally been feuding their entire wrestling career, so this this feud will last forever. But I, I don't know. Maybe SummerSlam is is a big blow off because you can put them in the Money in the Bank match. You can, and then you can have another, you know, a match or two. So maybe till SummerSlam, maybe we get the blow off there. I mean, that's that's my ideal booking scenario. I'll reiterate once again: I'm not going to be able. I'm not going to be in the state for SummerSlam. And if their blow off is at the Barclays Center for SummerSlam, I'll send you pictures. Every right. four seconds, just to make it work. So if we're going to make a call on this one, we're, we're doing our official pay-per-view. Um, I'm going to go on as I'm wearing a Sami Zayn shirt. And I'm going to go Owens also, just because I think that the feud has got to, got to go longer. And I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think having Zayn overcome and beat Rusev on Monday and, and just his perfect old, per, well, perfect old, Perfect underdog role, you know, that that was just done to perfection. Rusev killed him the whole time. He got his moves in every now and then, finished him with a roll-up. You know, the, Rusev's reaction, Lana's reaction, it, it was perfect. Oh, yeah. And then as he's standing on the entranceway, I was, I was just smiling because I knew what was coming. I knew that Kevin Owens was going to come out and attack him because that's what Kevin Owens does to Sami Zayn. And it is one of the greatest things ever, ever. Everything that guy does, Kevin Owens crashes the party, and it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, I didn't see it coming, so that's why. I, I, I guess I just shut myself off with when it comes to this feud. I don't know if I'm norm. I, I can really comment normally at times because I was like, yeah, good for Sammy. And then I was like, oh, come on. Why has this guy got to ruin everything? So I, I think I legitimately have no idea what's happening in wrestling when I'm watching this feud because I'm just so invested in Sami Zayn winning. And I just feel like at this point, what does Sami have to do to get rid of this guy, man? There's nothing. He'll be there forever. How do they possibly move on from – like, do, will they just always have this – like, even in WWE, like, because you figure after this feud runs its course – like they go their separate ways, but they'll always have this, right? Like, will they just go back and like feud again? Have you ever watched wrestling? No, no, this is especially my, especially wrestling with these guys. It's like my first, they my they feud and go their separate ways, and always they always like look at where they start. They started in a a training camp in Canada, and they have intertwined their way to WWE where they are now competing again. So, like, they will always find a way. And w- whether they go their separate ways after this, then they, they say they're in a tag match. Like, they are going to just continue their feud even if anyone tells them to or not. 
Like that's just always going to be there with them. There's no way around that. Right. You always have. Oh, they patched it up. Look at them. They're they're the tag team champions. This is great. Oh man. And then Kevin Owens turns on. Like it, you know, you're always going to have some type of relationship interaction because the chemistry is so good. You're you're throwing money away if you're not. Fair. Okay. Uh, so let's see. What else do we have in the pay per view? Um, well, on well, SmackDown, we also get the uh, breakdown breakup of the League of Nations officially. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand why. I don't see a good reason for them to be broken up right now. Well, what was the good reason for them to be together? Well, because if not, what happens to them separately? Separately, they can have their own individual storylines. Together, they were done. There was nothing else to do. <laughs> Like they weren't gonna win the tag titles, they weren't a tag team ever. So what are they gonna do? They're all they were always four guys or three guys having individual stories. I think it would be great if they were just like broken up and they fought for a while and then they came back together and they called themselves the United Nations. <laughs> With like uh, Kevin Owens and Cesaro. It, the fact that it would follow history's storyline would just be so great. Like the League of Nations just didn't work out, but you know the, we're back together as the United Nations. Then this is going to be a stronger force. Like that, that would just be that would be amazing. I would just be so happy. To hear that. <laughs> Who knows, man? Maybe, maybe that's what we'll get. Uh, but from from Raw, was there any? I mean, Raw was was solid, but there was nothing really on Raw that stood out on its own, right? Like there was nothing that didn't lead to anything that no, we're I mean, address here on Sunday anyway. No, I mean, yeah. The big thing was the announcement, obviously. The Vince. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have the same storyline from three months ago, except now we're not going to have a match. We're just going to announce it. No problem. I, just, I no mean, problem. what I, I really don't like, though, I really never liked. All right, you're going to hear my decision about this at the pay per view. I, I don't like when there's like news that's going to be revealed like that at a show. It just annoys me because it, it hypes it up. Like if if Stephanie gets back in charge, I'm just going to be. It's going to suck. Well, but I don't. This is not the end of it. Like you know what I mean. Like I don't think this is. Hey, Stephanie, you're in charge. All right, see you, Shane. We'll never see you again. I, I think okay. it's, even if he says Stephanie is in charge, I think there's something Shane puts up a fight. He's not just going to walk away from this now. So I think there's something that's coming from this, be it a feud, be it whatever, but something is going to happen. I, I don't mind this because I'm excited in a way not knowing, oh, okay, what's going to happen, what's going to come of this, what feud is this going to lead to, what maybe young guys can this involve. You know, I, I want to see that kind of stuff. Do you think that this is – am I just holding out hope for a brand split? Or could this actually be like he says, no, well, you know. It, maybe it is. Yeah, I think I think this is what you're going to say. So you can finish your thought and then I'll uh, address it. You know, maybe he says something like, you know, although Shane lost the match, it's been really good for business, even though it really hasn't. But it's, I mean, the product's better, in my opinion. Um, so then he goes forward and he's like, all right, well, so Stephanie did have, you know, was in charge. You guys are in charge of SmackDown and Shane stays in charge of Raw or vice versa. Maybe he just comes out. Oh, well, yes, I, I agree with that. And maybe. Maybe he comes out and he's just like, oh, you know what? Let's have a family show. Everyone's going to run this together. And then, uh, like, they start doing something like that, and then that's where it leads to, like, Dad, I can't do this anymore. All right, fine. You know what? You go run SmackDown. Shane will run Raw, and then we'll just, you know. So I don't – either way. Like I said, I don't Shane's think wife is- comes out, and she gets in Stephanie's face, right? She fights Triple, Triple H. H. Triple H is out there, right? Shane's in Triple H's face. Teddy Long's music hits. All right, players, that's it. The four of you are going to be in a match today. <laughs> Just Sorry. Shane's wife versus Triple H for in-law control. Oh, man, that would be great. Is there a – they don't have a, a third sibling, right? 
I think they do. I think like there's a, a quiet third, yeah, yeah, quiet yeah. third sibling that like no one knows about. <laughs> oh man. So then, what else we have? Well, we have the Divas match, which has a lot of backstory this week added to it. Uh, you have Charlotte defending against Natalia. But uh, the added thing is that they're both going to have support in their corners. Charlotte, of course, will have uh, Rick. And Natalia is going to have her uncle, not her father, which is slightly weird sometimes, but you know, have her uncle in her corner. Well, it wouldn't be the same to have Jim Neidhart and Ric Flair. Yeah. Plus, you- from seeing him on Total Divas, I do not think he wants to be involved in that role. All right. Fair. I, I just think it would make a little more sense, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've said from the beginning, like, Natalia being involved just kind of washes it for me. I, I don't, there's no feeling in my mind that she would ever win this, especially with the new belt and all that kind of thing. Like, I don't think she's going to win. So that kind of eliminates that anticipation of the match for me, even any bit, you know? So uh, I'll say Charlotte wins, and we move on, hopefully. Did you hear about uh, Ric Flair's antics this week? Well, I don't know about antics, but yes. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> the, uh... He tripped over a bag. He's like, against... they said he wasn't drunk. They said nothing was wrong. He fell. He got on a flight like a couple hours later. All right. Someone had a picture of him at the bar. Apparently, he was at the bar, but... Well, I mean, he's Ric Flair. Yeah, did you see my favorite... Okay, he can have a drink or two. And... My favorite part of the story was his like his uh, PR person comes out and says that, like, while it's true that Ric Flair is not only a legend of the ring, but a legend of the bar, of, like, bars, <laughs> like, it basically was, like... In the statement, it was like, yes, he drinks a lot, and he has been known to, but on this occasion, yeah. he wasn't. He wasn't, I swear, yeah. So I, I thought that was awesome. And then the, they cut it from SmackDown, but he told Charlotte to kill herself. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, apparently, like, I guess she was like, you know, and my – uh my 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 uncle's gonna be there, whatever. If you if you get involved, he's gonna take you to the woodshed. You know, Brett can, Brett's beaten you before, and then he was like, Brett, Brett, Brett beat me. Listen to me, Brett beat me. Kill yourself. That's awesome. Oh, and amazing. it was just like people. They ended up cutting it from the show. I mean, I get, I get where her. Like, I'm I'm fine with it. I don't think it's a. I think it's kind of like a non-story. I mean, it, it is in terms of, like, the PG-ness and stuff. And then, like, it's just weird to read that Tuesday night he said, kill yourself, and, like, went off kind of script on the, uh, you know, during his promo. And then the next morning he had this issue at the at the airport. Yeah. You know, so that that's the only reason why. String of bad luck. Like, yeah, I mean, it it is, right? But it almost – goes together, right? Like, you you could probably see a story well, there. Like, where, yeah, you could see some, like, Bender story out of it. Yeah, I yeah, definitely he gets, he started get He started drinking at SmackDown, comes out, and you know what I'm telling you? Kill yourself. Woo! And then, like, continue, just drank all night, called J.J. Dillon out. I don't know. I'm pretty sure J.J. I, I don't didn't, didn't he die? But anyway. No, he's not dead, but he definitely is not going to come out and start drinking with Rick in no, the middle. Because uh, they just had a new table for three with uh, Tully Blanchard, Ric Flair, oh, and Arn Anderson. Out? And like, it, like, just the way Ric Flair was telling stories and stuff, I was like, yo. Like, it, Arn Anderson was definitely like the the bodyguard, like, father in, in real life. Like, oh, yeah. definitely just kind of like, Oh geez, like here goes Rick again doing this. Like just kind of having to like watch him and make sure he, like, you know, like it, it just made it even better. He wasn't an enforcer in terms of protecting <laughs> Rick from other people. He was basically protecting Rick from himself and Straight enforcing up, the rules of life. Like you can't do that and live, Rick. Please don't. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I mean, again, short as always, but you know, it was good. But they kept talking the whole time about like, oh. 
I wish JJ was here, and I wish Oli was here, so I didn't know. I don't... I'm pretty... Okay, I know just Oli... I feel like Oli might be dead. I don't know, but I'm... Oh, I'm like 100% positive JJ is not dead. Yeah, yeah, it shows it. They were on a show because uh, JJ was actually on an episode of of uh, Ric Flair's podcast. And, like, I mean, it was a, he brought up a crazy... It was weird because he decided to bring up a story about a time that, like, he had JJ, like, lie for him <laughs> and, like, help him almost, like, yeah, take his daughter I, out of the I house, like, that. behind... Like, while he was drunk behind his wife's back. Like, something like... And JJ's like... You could hear it in his voice, like, are we really... Is this the story we need to be talking about? The time I almost helped you break the law and like abduct a child, Rick. <laughs> and that other guy, that's why that show, what I love about that show and hate it, but it's, is that that one guy, um, I can't remember his co host name, but he's just like Rick's handler. Like he needs to keep, a, keep him yeah, on yeah, task. Yeah. Like, like, you know, Rick will say, like, oh yeah, well, back in 91, he's like, uh, that was actually 87. Like he just has to remind him of it's like just Rick's this crazy. I mean, Ric Flair's almost reached like I'm sitting in a nursing home and just reliving random shit all at once and talking about it confusedly. Like level of his life. When you listen to that show, like it, it kind of makes me sad for him because it's like he has no idea what's going on. Like they just put the they put the microphone in front of him. Go ahead, Rick. Just go. He just talks. Like, yeah. Whoa! I'm ready to go. And he just starts elbow dropping <laughs> shit. It's like it's like Festus. Like you just put a mic in front of him, and he just starts. Yes. He just goes into Ric Flair. You, you remove the mic, and he just like stops speaking. Like what? I know they'll never do this, and it's terrible for a character. But there's just one part of me that wishes that at one point the bell just rings and Gallows just goes crazy. <laughs> Just one just night. Snaps, he's like, wait. And Carl Henderson's like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Go. Oh, my bad, my bad. Like, if they, if they did it at a house show, like, yeah, non televised. Like, that's, it. I was just going to say, like, you know, you'll probably get it there around, like, a SmackDown that you just never see, like, something like that. Oh, man, that would be great. But, I heard, um, did you watch? Was it, I heard that either main event, that there was a really great match between Tyler Breeze and Kalisto. Come on. No, oh. I mean, I, I was reading tweets about it. Yeah, because I'm watch. like, yeah, exactly. Um, find a way to watch. Since it's on SmackDown right now, and I, I wanted to talk about it while I was watching it, but the the video package for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn was phenomenal. Ooh. Well, I mean, those guys are... It, those guys wizards. are top notch, and it, it, it's always amazing. But to see two guys that you watched, you know, I, I say this all the time, but two guys that you watch on the independence in front of a thousand people, see them with a video package. Like, Oh, this is a story that I was a part of for the last 10 years. <laughs> you know, like it, it's kind of crazy. Like that's, you know, it's going to these, uh, independent shows. Like we do into wrestle pro and fighting spirit. Um, I'm trying to catch a couple of other shows around the area. The idea that like one like one of these guys, you know, might one day like you know be on NXT or be on WWE, like, and we saw them in a place with fifty people, you know, like I won't say anything bad, but like evolve that that we're going to we are going to see a, a, at least three or four guys who, well, like Galloway it, it is a big deal. And yeah. Gargano is on NXT, and uh, uh, like Saber and Scroll will be on NXT at some. Like Saber is amazing, and you know those guys will be there. Uh, Gulak is is pretty good. Maybe he'll get there one day. But Evolve is like their their baby now. Like, and they're taking guys from there, and they're bringing guys to Evolve that they want to work with. So everyone on Evolve is. Like WWE uh, contracted a Jace, you know. I'm trying to. Well, I don't know why in my head, and this is not going to probably bore some of the viewers, but I can't picture where this place is on Northern Boulevard that we're going to go watch the show. It's just like in a little club. But do you know who owns? You know who runs Evolve, right? Uh, Gabe Sapolsky. No. And you know, you know who he is. Yeah, the former uh, Ring of Honor guy. Yes. Yeah. So that like. Uh, I guess legacy, if you will, 
is there. You know, he has a track record that's proven. So the guys that he was already bringing in to evolve were guys that could be on their way. And I think that's why Triple H kind of gravitated towards this, like, oh, well, one, this guy knows what he's doing. And two, you know, look at the roster that is already there. Did you, uh, did you hear about, I was reading reports that Ring of Honor might be trying to buy out TNA. Yeah, just for like the tape libraries and stuff, I heard. Man. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really excited about the Evolve show. Uh, you know, three of the guys, like you said, are going to be, they're definitely competing in the global cru- cruiserweight series, so that's going to be really cool. Well, Squirrel uh, and Saber are, I think they competed in it already in England, but yes. they're just wrestling. Sabres in it, yeah, yeah, like and they're then, just wrestling. But and then you've got TJ Perkins, Perkins and and Yehi. Like TJ Perkins is really good. Yeah, you know? um, so he was on TNA. He was he's on ROH and all those kind of places. So he's really good too. So well, um, Williams and Gulak are like uh, boys. Like oh, okay. Gulak is like mentoring Williams to become like an ex good wrestler. And okay. so they're fighting, you know, as like a student versus teacher kind of thing. So that'll be that'll be really fun. They're more, you know, old school, straight wrestling. So so that'll be good. But you know that that show should be really really good. And like we said, you know, a, a lot of WWE guys pipeline kind of a thing. So one weekend we get to see four guys who are definitely going to be in the global global cruiserweight yeah, like series. We're we're straight watching the global cruiserweight series, which is kind of crazy. Let's say Dorado. Just the, name just the fact that we're going to independent shows and seeing WWE like product almost is is just what? Like where? What world are we living in? Where did this come from? How did they come so quickly? Like what? What the hell, man? And like, overnight, what, Triple H just changed I, the world. What I want to know is like how long has all this wrestling in New York been going on? that you and I just did not know about. Whoa, 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 whoa. Because for the past five years, at least, I've been trying to get you to go to any and everything, and it was it was always just a nah, 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 nah. And now you want to embrace everything and get me to go everywhere, and it, it, it is quite ironic. I don't, I don't like recall that. All, all of these little companies, even ROH, you never wanted to go to anything. Wait, that's it, not true. Five years ago, we were going to ROH shows, we man. We went to ROH like twice. But then every time after that, that I would ask you to go, you would never want to go. It's too much money. Ah, uh, nah, the view isn't good enough or whatever. It was everything like that for, <laughs> for, for years. These are- so the independent scene has been there. You just didn't want to acknowledge it. You're looking at StatWife is not here to uh, to pull up stats and figures to disprove this argument. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, StatWife came to me came with me to a Ring of Honor show like six years ago. Okay, <laughs> that still does not erase all the other times that I tried to go in between this, and and it was never uh, permitted. All right, well, moving on. So, uh, final call. You're saying Charlotte wins. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's where they started, by the way. Yeah, Charlotte wins. All right. Uh, See, what else? Speaking of ROH, quickly, um, because I don't really think we need to go into it unless anything happened. What? But it, uh, yeah. he, here's here's my issue. They have a pay per view in two weeks. Have they done a thing on the show over the past month to build up to this pay per view? No. Has there been a mention of Cole Cabana? Uh, maybe, maybe they spoke about it, but he hasn't had a match on ROH TV. They haven't acknowledged his return to it, and and all that stuff. Like, but they have. They, but oh, this, not oh, on the weekly this is show. All, this is exactly. This is all old footage from their other shows. Yeah, this uh, this last week, I think the last two weeks were from uh, when they were in Japan. Yeah. I wanna- and this is what kills me, and this is why I don't watch it because they have a big pay per view in two weeks, not even next Sunday. So they have one more show, and and there's no build up to any of these matches. There's no rivalries brewing. Nothing. 
I bet you this week will. So one one out of one week out of two months, you start building up to the show. All right, fair. You, you know what I'm saying? That's that's my problem with Ring of Honor TV is that it, it, they don't build to anything. They just have matches to have matches, and that's not a drawing point of wrestling to me. So just yes, at times it can be, but I need a story behind it. Yeah, like I mean, even we were at the Russell Pro Show, and didn't um, Chris Payne come out and attack Fala Ba? Mm-hmm. And now Chris Payne and Fala Ba are having follow up match this Saturday in Rawway. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, basic stuff. Just and continuing the story. As, you know, as soon as Chris Payne came out during the match, I was like, "Oh shit, okay, these guys have some beef. All right, cool." Uh, let's go from there. You know, w- without knowing anything, I was immediately interested in that feud because it's a feud and it stood out above most other things on that show as just thrown together matches. Which, I, I mean, mean, you know, that that's the independent world is thrown together matches. But, you know, certain companies that have a more stable roster, like ROH, it's a lot or it should be a lot easier to um, u- utilize that and, and have feuds and storylines leading to your biggest pay-per-view or I one of like your, your pay-per-views. In their defense, I feel like there have been times where they'll have a good, like, three-week build. And then, like, I don't know what it is about the taping schedule or what happens, but it's like they'll be okay for a couple of weeks and, like, everything's, like, makes sense. And then it's suddenly you're like, what? Like, it, then it doesn't make sense. Because they're just behind. Like, they tape so much, and they focus on those things. And then by the time they move on to something else, you're a month behind. Well, hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about the, the Cabana Lethal match. I actually think Cabana's got a good shot of winning. <laughs> Or this feud continuing? Like I feel like oh, this feud Reto, in front of us in Brooklyn, in front of thirty people. He wasn't and, there. You said, and you think? Well, he was there, but you think he's going to win the ROH World Title a week later? I nothing would make me as a wrestling fan and a fan of Colt Cabana happier than to see him win the Ring of Honor Championship. <laughs> well, maybe yes, it, it wouldn't upset me, but. He could interview the belt. He could interview himself on the next show. I mean, on his on his show. Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, back to our uh, payback pay per view. Sorry for the sidetrack. Uh, who do we? So we have we just spoke about the divas. We have Jericho yeah. and AJ. Jericho and AJ. Well. We have. I'm oh, sorry. you mean? Oh, okay. We have the we have Callisto and Ryback as the pre-show. So I don't really see any other reason to have this match other than to give Ryback the belt finally. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really sure why else you would do it. I mean, again, I hate title changes on a pre-show, but. Yeah, I mean, nobody has cared about this feud or the U.S. title since WrestleMania, so you might as well put on Ryback and see if you can get something going with him and the belt. All right, so, yeah, I'm going to go with Ryback on this one, too. I don't think this... Okay, we have the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championship, Enzo and Cass versus the Void Films. This is a tough one, because heel face-wise, you want to say the Void Villains yeah. win... Just straight popularity, entertainment wise. You want to say end zone cats win, so uh, I don't know. I don't know which way we're gonna go. Well, here's the problem. All right, if the Vaughn villains win and they get the title shot, uh, can they survive not winning it? Maybe they win it. Yeah, because see now, if that's if that's what's going to happen. Then I can see. <laughs> like, th- this is the problem. We don't know, uh, you know, step two of this. Like, we know yeah. we're we're only trying to predict step one. But like, if 
we knew they had plans for the Lord Villains, or clearly they have some type of plans for end zone cast. So I, I really don't know, you know, like it, it's it would be a strange move to bring the Lord Villains up and just kind of have them play the spoiler for end zone cast. Like, you know, they come up, they debut in the same tournament. Now they're in the finals together. Now if they lose, one of those two teams kind of trumps the other one, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it's so I'm, I guess, it's so weird. Am I going to say Vaude Villains win? I mean, you didn't really have, okay, do you feel that their interaction with the Dudleys is done, end zone cast? It, it seems to be that way. Because, I mean, couldn't you then, in a way, I don't know, do you have... You could always have the Dudleys come out and cost them and, that's, and just yeah. continue that. But I don't know because after that match, it ended cleanly and and they have moved on from it. You know, they haven't had any interaction with the Dudleys. Not that they can't just come out of nowhere, but, you know, they, they haven't actually been promoting that. It should be an interesting... It should be interesting to watch the match. I'm excited for it because I don't know what's really going to happen next. I just like do you do you give away end zone cast against the new day at Money in the Bank, like, or or do you wait off on that maybe till SummerSlam or, or something along those lines? You know, I mean, you know, I talked about this a while back about how I wanted them to uh, end zone cast to debut in Brooklyn. And I thought that would be the most I thought I thought it would be like the strongest place for them to debut because they get the most support. So I don't know. I mean if you have if you do have the Vaud villains end up winning the titles, then you know, then you have Enzo and Cass beat them at SummerSlam in front of the New York crowd. How you do like it would just be I'd say it's one of the biggest pops of the night if they end up winning that belt. Well, but they get, I mean, like, you've seen, like, they were in Hartford, Connecticut, and they got a crazy sing-along response. So I don't think it really matters. But I, I don't know if them versus the Ford villains is, is the money feud that you want. You know, like, I think them against New Day has to be, like, I, I just think, like, it's a waste if you don't go there. You know, you have both of these guys hotter than – than they've been ever, and I think it's a mistake to avoid that. You know, like we've seen their interaction and and that just pop that they get. It's it's unlike most. But I mean, the problem is, is that you're going to have them wrestle as faces against each other. I mean, the whole point. I feel a lot of what Enzo does is he belittles his opponent, right? Yeah, but, like, so he can belittle the New Day, and then New Day can come back at him with something else, you know? All right. I mean, I just this don't is, see it happening. This is part but... of the problem that is why uh, I don't know who's, gonna, who's winning. Yeah. Because there are just ways you can go with each team, and each team is new to, to Raw. So how does either one lose? You know, maybe we do see the Dudleys or – but I think that would cloud the Vaude Villains. So, I don't know. Maybe the Vaude Villains get the win just clean and end zone cast keep talking and move on and we get something down the line. Yeah, I mean, they they managed to avoid looking weak, I guess, by not winning the, tag, the NXT tag team titles, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think if there's a team that could... Well, yes, but then we get to that Bray Wyatt level of well, these guys never win, so why should I care? Oh, but I don't think it's going to take that. I don't think it'll – I'm not – I'm just like I'm saying – But I'm saying builds off what you're saying. Like, you're, you're saying they never won the NXT – they never won the big one in NXT. So now if they come to Raw and they never win the big one right away, you're going to say, okay, well – Okay. You know, they're entertaining as hell. So it's going to take a lot to stop caring about them. But so was Bray Wyatt at the beginning. You know, and eventually this stick may get old, and 
people may just stop caring about them. If if why am I going to sing along if you don't win matches? No, oh, because it's fun to sing. Correct, but for somebody who I want to root for, mm-hmm. you know, Duly you just noted. you just risk you you. You're playing with fire, you know. You have these guys who are so over. Let them be over. Don't push them down and make people fight for them to be over because people get tired of that fight sometimes. But, yes, nice. so uh, I'll say that ends on cast win this. Okay. I'm going to go with Bod Villains. Okay. And then we have... The Intercontinental Champion, The Miz, versus Cesaro. Um, I think The Miz has to cheat yeah. his way here and, and get this win. It's it's too early for him to lose it, and you'll, you'll buy him some heel tactics and heel heat by having him cheat Cesaro, who people love. And then Cesaro can get the win somewhere down the line. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, Maurice gets involved somehow, does something to help Miz win. Um, and I like that, see, in my head, they're married, so they're always going to be together. Yeah. You know, so, like, she'll always see it as helping her man, right? She won't ever feel like she, you know, she deserves the recognition at some point. Like, I, I, I don't know. I really feel like they, he could really keep that icy title for for a long time legitimately and draw so much heat. Yeah, I mean he he is very wife. much he, he's very much like Honky Tonk Man. And and you can do a thing where she gets the women's belt at some point and he has a belt and you have a power couple. You you can always play that role too. Um he can definitely hang on to it for a while because of her because he's such a dirty heel. You know, uh, he has all those outs and, and ways around actually winning the match. So that gives him uh, an extra couple months just just based off that. But uh, I don't know. You know, we'll we'll see what they do because they can very easily wake up tomorrow and say like, eh, yeah, forget about it. Let's just give it to Cesaro and just go from there. So you know, we'll see what they do. But I, I definitely think the Miz should win this one, and I think he will. Maybe Cesaro wins the match, but the Miz will be champion. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I hate you for saying that because now, well, I'm, he could get counted out. He could get DQ'd. Yeah, yeah. You know? so now, now I'm wondering: does that happen to save? I, I actually think the Miz will get a pinfall victory because I feel like hooking the tights or the ropes yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's got to be that. I feel like later, like maybe the next match, then he can get DQ'd. You know, but right now, I think it has to be he cheats some way to get the pinfall. Yeah, it could be. And he can come out and say, yeah, I beat you. No, what are you talking about? All right, that's it, right? There's no more. There aren't any more matches. Um, we have Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose. If Jericho wins, I am just completely, I'll be completely shocked. Yeah, I mean, I think he beat AJ to keep him looking strong so mm-hmm. that Dean could get a good win, and you know I think that is perfectly fine, and I kind of actually like that because it really didn't hurt AJ at all, and it helped Jericho going into this feud. So they've been entertaining with their exchanges. Ambrose has gotten a little more mic time and definitely a little more comfortable in, in his character on the mic, and mm-hmm. you know it, it's been very entertaining. I don't. I agree with you that I don't think there's any way Jericho wins this, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah, looking forward to uh, an Ambrose victory here. Yeah, and then we have the biggest and probably most intriguing storyline, for sure, uh, Roman Reigns and AJ Styles, and what side or who do Gallows and Gunn align themselves with. And I, I... couldn't tell you another time that I was more excited for a Roman Roman Reigns match. I mean, I'm trying to think. So, you know, did Reigns come down on Monday and like interact like a Make a Wish kid? Yes, which was terrible, but that's okay. Well, like, 
to me that right away that means that he he's not going to turn heel. Well, see, and this is one thing that I feel like I've listened to a couple of podcasts on Raw and all that kind of stuff, and I feel like maybe I'm the, I feel like I'm the only one that heard this, or I interpreted it wrong or or differently than everyone else. But when the Usos came backstage, right, and they said, "Oh, we got your back," he said, Roman Reigns said, uh, "Some like oh, the all needs help from the one." Or he he said something like, oh, the one doesn't need help from the all. Sometimes the all needs help from the one. And I took that as like, oh, he's saying like, I don't really need your guys' help, but you need my help. Yeah. And so I'll be out there to help you later. And that's what happened. And yes, Gallows and Gunn and Reigns have had some physical interaction, but it's never been anything serious. It, it's, it always comes down to him and AJ getting in some type of physical altercation. Yeah, it, I have watched that. It it doesn't come down to Reigns ever spearing Gallows and Gunn and standing tall over them. They always escape out through the crowd, and it comes down to AJ getting hit or Reigns getting hit or the Uso something. So they always have that out where it can they can tie with Reigns. But there is also this story of Finn Balor. And what if Finn Balor comes up and this whole thing wasn't a ploy for Reigns, wasn't a ploy for AJ. It's just a ploy to get Finn Balor in the main event and get them both out of the way. And uh, I think that is the way that they should go with this. You don't turn Reigns heel yet. You don't – Styles isn't the heel. They're both baby faces. They can team up to fight Gallows and Gunn or Balor, or whatever the case. But I think Finn Balor debuting it is the way to go. I don't know if I can handle that. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been going back and forth on this match. You know, I didn't really ever buy that AJ was getting these guys to help him and, f- and making believe he's not. Um, it feels like a very uh, almost like Sting type. Uh, like when Sting, uh, like yeah, when people thought he was NWO, but he wasn't. Um, type thing. Kind, kind of, yes. I, I get where you're going with that. I thought you were going more like the the bad guys are befriending Sting and he believes them because that, that's not no, no, exactly no, 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 no. correct. No, I think so, it's, yeah, it's just more I, like, uh, no, I swear, these guys really, I didn't ask for this. You know, yeah, like, I don't yeah, know. I don't, I, why I are you guys doubting me? Exactly. And I think one of the outcomes of you guys are doubting me because Reigns is planting those seeds and, and that's you know, so, like, I, I feel like they've done a great job here of muddying it for me, whereas I don't know if it's Balor, I don't know if it's Reigns, I, maybe they could stay with AJ, but I, I think that's the farthest option. What's the you worst know, result? Staying with AJ. So, like, the worst result would be, like, who do you pick as, like, so what's the worst thing you'd want to see at the end of the show? Like, the show, how does the match end? How does the show end? Well, like, the worst thing I want to see is, like, nothing comes out of this. Reigns fights them off and wins, and, like, that's it. You know, but, like, if if they come out and cost Reigns the belt and, and they align with Styles, I would be a little disappointed. Like, okay. uh, I would rather see them align with Reigns, or I would rather see this be the call-up of Balor. You know, I, I think that's the better way to go. You know, NXT is taped till the next special. They already have that main event set. So Balor doesn't really need to do anything on NXT, similar to what Kevin Owens did when he got called up. He had his match with Balor, NXT was taped, and then he went on and did his thing on the main roster and then came back for that match, fought on the pay-per-view the night after. So I, I think that's could be Finn Balor's role, and there's no better time to start that than Sunday or Monday. So if Balor comes up with the Bullet Club, with the uh, Balor, with the Balor Club. The Balor Club. What is AJ still involved? Does it become a triple threat? Very well could be, or it very well could be AJ and Finn. It could be AJ. Maybe he finds a partner and they fight Gallows and Gun. Uh, it, it, it could be anything. Maybe it's AJ Reigns and Ambrose. Something like that against the ballot. I, I don't know. You, you know, you could do a lot of things. 
you think we're leading to a you think there's ever a point where it's like Ballad Club versus former Shield guys? It very well could be Ballad Club versus the Shield, depending on, you know, spots on the card or heel face. But the the way Gallows and Gunn have been portrayed is very Shield <laughs> Shield esque. You know, come to the crowd, fucking everyone up, winning matches. They're being portrayed as legit instead of, oh, these are just two new guys. These are the three-time IWGP New yeah. Japan champions. And, you know, they're putting that over. They're mentioning who these guys are. They're not Frank Frank Gallows and uh, Carl with a C Manders. <laughs> like, you know, they're just who they are. <laughs> They're not changing their gimmicks. They're, they're, you know, nothing. They're just who they are. What they did on the independence matters. They have a history to them, and that makes these guys feel legit. You know, AJ and Gallows and Gunn, they've sold as big stars, and it works. People believe what you tell them. It's going to be a good, it's gonna be a good pay-per-view, man. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think so, and this is probably one of the first times ever that I've actually been excited for a payback because we were discussing the other day, I think how usually it's just uh, WrestleMania rematches, and now you have one WrestleMania rematch, you know, and just other things that kind of started at WrestleMania or after WrestleMania, and that's kind of cool, because you never get that. You know, it's always just the same exact matches that we saw in WrestleMania, this time watered down. No, yeah, I. It's weird because I feel like I've been conditioned yes. to to be okay with this pay per view being. I mean, it's called payback, right? I mean, it's and it makes I, perfect sense. Yeah, it's like I'm totally fine with it normally. So this is why this is like so like whoa, what are you guys? You guys are giving us new matches it, like, exactly because it's cool because WrestleMania was actually the end of that year. You know, like nothing Mm -hmm. from WrestleMania is really carrying over. People left, people came back, people turned, people are this, Shane's in charge. So everything is kind of different, and it feels like this pay-per-view is the start of this year rather than this is the end of last year, and and now we actually have an outlook going forward rather than usually this is just, uh, uh, you know, a flashback. Well, it's going to be really... um... Well, that's the thing. I don't want to get our expectations yeah. too high and that nothing happens. But they've built all of these storylines to start or wrap up at this pay-per-view. So, you know, we've been saying since we started doing this show, the the roster now is full of talented guys, full of guys who know what they're doing and know how to tell a story. And it'll, it'll never be a bad pay-per-view anymore. We're not going to get those duds that just like, ugh. Whatever, because you are you have guys that you've cared about for a lot of the past five years or, or more, you know, maybe not in WWE, some in WWE regardless, but you have guys that you're connected to and invested in emotionally that are on these shows, and that does a lot. You know, when I watch, like, when I have a role that has Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Neville, Rollins, Ambrose, all these guys. And then I have one that's like Cena and Reigns. And it's like, it, there's a very big difference. Like, I don't care as much because I'm just not as invested in these guys as I am the guys I've been watching on the independents, you know? I'm looking forward to it. Couldn't be more excited. It's going to be a good pay per view. Uh, Cena has announced that he won't be back till the end oh, of yeah. the day. So he, he can't mess this up. Well, I mean. He said, not that he won't be back until the end of May, that, you know, he was supposed to take nine months. He took five, and he's coming back at the end of May. Memorial Day Raw, I think he said. So that's interesting. That'll be exciting to see him back and see where he's placed and who he's shooting with because uh, from when he got hurt, there's a hell of a lot of new guys on this roster now. So, you know, I'm excited to see Cena and Balor, Cena and the Bullet Club. That kind of stuff is cool. Because stuff you never, like, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. When people that I know first started watching wrestling recently, there was a lot of, like, 
oh, well, what about this guy from New Japan and, and these guys from TNA and this and that? Like, you think they'll ever be in WWE? And I'm like, no. You know, like, look at these guys. Like, they, they don't ever hire these people. And now it has completely changed in the past six months to a year where, like, everything I previously knew is wrong. So now I'm questioning everything else about it. Like, oh, maybe this is what they do. Maybe this is how they do it. And that, that's an exciting thing, you know. We have been conditioned for so long to to deal with the way that things are run in WWE, and now that's completely different. I know. Just – go ahead. To add to it, like Eric Young coming out. Uh, exactly. Like Eric Young, Bobby Roode, Nakamura, Balor, Styles, uh, Gallows and Gunn. These, these aren't new names. Like these are guys who have been killing it for – four years, five years, ten years. And so why would you think that they're ever going to get that call? They haven't got it ever before, so now they're in their 30s, and why would WWE sign them now? Well, they would sign them now because it's completely different uh, philosophically. You know, they're signing independent guys. They're signing smaller guys. They're keeping their names. They're building off what they've already built, and that is not how WWE was run, you know, uh, hence Daniel Bryan. Instead well, of like, Brian Danielson, it's like they finally. <laughs> yes, yes, that yeah, is the okay. best. Here, because here, here's what it is for me. It's like they were in a meeting, and Vince was like, "You know, uh, I've heard about these uh, these interwebs. Uh, apparently, if we bring someone in and change their name, people can just go and find out who they were anyway." <laughs> so. Maybe we should use these interwebs powers for us. This is Triple like, H. This is Triple H. This is it's one hundred percent Triple H. Uh, like, Vince, uh, it's, there's it's a just a change, It's a change in philosophy uh, of how you take these guys who are already worth money and already created their own star, and how you just market that. You know, you don't you don't have to have power over everything. You don't have to own every single thing. You know, it's okay. I just, I keep, I'm sorry, I'm listening to you. But I also keep seeing, like, Triple H and Vince, like, backstage. Like, Vince is like, that was a good match. And then he's like, you should uh, tweet a picture of that. Tweet a picture of that. And he's like, uh, tweet, Vince. It's a uh, tweet. And then he, like, I just, because, like, just the idea, like, I saw, the, the way I found out about Eric Young was, like, an alert on my phone, you know? Like, and then, like, by the time you actually sent me the link, like I had seen it, like on Twitter, I had seen it through the WWE app notification. Yeah. Like I, I had seen it on a web, you know, like I, I, I was in a, I was in a chat, and like someone sent me like a link of that, you know, minutes after the guy shows up, and it's everywhere, you know. And instead of, instead of it being like internet news, they're using it to their advantage. Yeah, instead and, of someone leaking it, they're and, leaking and, and, it, and I love it. I just, it's, it makes sense, man. It, it makes sense because you put eyes on the product, you make people talk about it, you make people want to watch it. So it works. All right. Yeah. You have anything else for this week? No, no. I'm uh, pretty sure that's it. All right. Well, before we leave you, ladies and gentlemen, just want to remind you, uh, please uh, stop over, leave us a comment. Subscribe to our channel over on iTunes. You can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on Stitcher. You can find us on Spreaker. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Google Play Store. Uh, my co-host just shot himself in the brain because I'm going through this again. Also, make sh- uh, remember that we're being brought to you in partnership with W2M Network. Uh, it's Wrestling to the Max. And also with LastWordOnSports.com. You can go to Last Word on Sports and find my articles on wrestling. You can follow me uh, specifically at... L W O S Rich, and you can follow our show's Twitter handle at Running Wild L W O S. You can find us on Facebook at Running Wild on Wrestling. Please make sure you send us your emails over to Running Wild Podcast at gmail.com. You can send us questions, comments, anything you want. We will read it on air. We'd love to hear from you guys. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, we know you guys are all busy, but you know, we miss you. So make sure you write in. And on that note, yeah, on, for, on that note for everyone who didn't listen to the beginning of the show, yeah, because I do it twice. Uh, I just want to remind you guys that you have been listening to the podcast that is just too sweet. sweet.